The company recently leased Lockheed Martin's 113,000 square foot former vertical launch building in Maryland near uh, Baltimore. Uh, and Peter, your CEO, described this as part of a broader vertical integration strategy. So, um, yeah, but I've got a couple of questions on that. But before I ask those, perhaps you can just explain what the overall vision for vertical integration actually is. Sure, sure. So, so it comes to kind of from the acquisition strategy and, and what we did when we raised the capital in 2021 and deployed it throughout 21 and 22, right? So, so the focus there was that we needed to get the best heritage and the best businesses within the subcomponent domain. So we're really proud of kind of how those assets have rolled into our portfolio, what they've enabled from a cash perspective in terms of kind of providing cash stability into the business as well as the, the technological differentiation, differentiation they have. Um, if you think about, you know, what we went and acquired um, and just kind of this is the genesis of that, that front end of being vertically integrated is, is we went and acquired businesses that literally take raw material in the door and, and push space components out the other side. And so the, those businesses are, are, you know, really good um, from a cash perspective, but also good from a technology perspective where they have the leading class technology with respect to space grade solar or the reaction wheels and star trackers. And, and what that enables us is kind of touching on the vertical integration strategy is we can take all of those technologies. We can take a lot of the assets that we utilize for launch, things like 3D printer and, and carbon composites. And then we can bundle that together into whole scale satellite manufacturing, which is what we're doing right with, with the global star constellation and, and some other efforts that we're focusing in on. And so as we think about, you know, how that goes from here, I'd say that the middle river facility is a great example where we can take, you know, call it, you know, more attractive locations or more affordable locations, integrate our technology and scale that within kind of the umbrella of the available talent community. And so as we think about, um, you know, not just the Virgin orbit facility, the old Virgin orbit facility, allowing, propulsion technologies, um, as well as our existing HQ allowing, allowing satellite manufacturing technologies. But if you think about kind of the large scale composite of capabilities that are going to be required for satellite architectures of the future, Middle River is going to be a really, really key cog in that as we scale up, um, not just Neutron within that facility, but, but utilize, you know, I'll we'll call it remaining capacity to, to um, focus on satellite architectures. Yeah, got it. And um, I think Peter added to to that vertical integration piece, this idea that uh, if companies can create and build their own rocket satellites and other components, as you just described, uh, you would therefore be able to provide direct to customer capabilities. And he described it actually as a new kind of SaaS or space as a service. So I think, you know, perhaps we're talking about the longer term vision here, but even so, I'm, I'm interested to understand how that, that might come to fruition. Yeah, it's so it's going to be, once we decide kind of the application that we want to pursue and, and keeping in mind that, you know, that decision process is something where we benefit a lot from the second mover dynamic. And, and we continue to benefit from that, right? Where in launch services, if you see, you know, things that work and things that don't work, there are ways to be more capital efficient in that domain. And that's, that's definitely something that's informed the neutron process, right? Where if a neutron rocket um, is smaller scale than a Falcon 9 rocket, that's for a reason. We, we, we've seen a lot of the capacity on those satellites typically come in at a, at a lower load um, on call it a standalone payload basis versus the neutron. And if you think about, you know, how that's going into the space application domain and, and what we think about there, um, there's still a very steep learning curve for applications from space with respect to spectrum, right? A lot of the constellations that are being scaled today are definitely focused on that broadband spectrum, which is typically uh, it can be challenging for different reasons. And so as we think about, you know, where we go with our application, we're going to be very methodical on, on what types of applications we pursue, the capital that's required to get to them, and kind of the margin profile, what we think we can derive from different applications. I'd say that, you know, longer term, that's definitely the vision. Um, but internally, the company is going to, you know, continue focusing on and kind of driving learnings from, I would say, both our competitors and our partners uh, as we as we get to crystallizing, you know, what we think we can achieve over the next, um, you know, we'll call a couple of years to end of decade. 